I'm going to deepen this morning's conversation uh, because I use this time that you've given me to, um, uh, to deepen those aspects from the introvert extrusions that you have been making the last 20 years to a kind of extrusion, so the coming time, um, uh, an extrovert one, and to turn that into this lovability that we discussed somehow this morning. There were indeed, as I said before, there's a reference that we have to, uh, to see that what have we made with each other the last time, and when I make just a quick tour through one of your cities, then I see this production coming up. So when is architecture, let's say urbanism, coming in? Yeah, here golden uh, balconies are passing by, and then some glass, and that's it. So the protest against that is understandable, uh, because it misses some kind of aspects that we should discuss today. So what can that be? On one hand, I said this morning, maybe we should be more porous. Morous means open up our souls, our bu buildings to, um, to, uh, yeah, to let things go, to cool us and to make it uh, more a social space. I take you to the Y factory in, uh, in Delft, um, where we try to study this kind of matter um, in different, say, formats. So how the future city will look like. This has to be done. So, and that produces a sequence of, say, observations of the future of the city. Today, I concentrate on the production of verticality in that way. And I address this new book that comes out uh, soon about this porous city, an open skyscraper version that wants to be, to comment this kind of sequence as such that you are producing or we are producing with each other and that all share one thing, they have one door, you can go up and go down and that's it. And there is almost nothing else, maybe on the top of some nice space, but, uh, and then the architect is used to make it a sexy shape. That's basically our job to do. And so what to do? And if I take you to this Lego uh, tower, then I think one can we do open up this. That is mini suggestion is already fantastic to do. So if I look to this series of what students have been making, then every step they show how in this case for, they can open up the building. That is like a pregnant woman that turn out in one mo beautiful space at it. Or you cut it and slice this like cactus makers and you get this kind of opening up where wash can hang. Or you twist it as such and wow, what a cool in between spaces can I make with that. You turn it into neighborhoods or into blobby neighborhoods and step by step you understand how much we can do in that way. Or another cactus appears in this horizon. So we can continue with that in, the, in every sequence, from zero to much more. So these are the series of how to add balconies, how to turn into more collective space in the ball series, how you can randomize that, how you can deviate, how you can turn it into landscapes or, the, or even parasites. So if you put them all in an order like this, then we certainly start to understand that there are more, say, motives to make this kind of, say, uh, a porosity. So here's the flip book I just showed, and there are the towers that are presented and that are maybe nicer than the army of Xi'an somehow, and that becomes like, this is what we have to test with each other. How many people are in this room? So if everyone makes one tower and put them in an order, you have a beautiful new cityscape that somehow experiment on the sequences. And there are gorgeous ones. Eh? There, the pregnant tower, you can see, for instance, uh, what can I notice here? Here, the ball series, also not bad in that way, that flattens out at a certain moment. The parasites that make a kind of gorgeous landscape of balconies, uh, still doable. We hear how they randomize. This one I love. Uh, this is the tower that you can walk from the bottom to the top and I'm back again because there are some civil engineers, of course, in the audience that I have to compensate. But of course, it's a very polite tower in that way. If I would have made this next to the World Trade Center in New York, then we would have something to talk about in that way. Here, the next one, the twister, the et cetera, and even falling waters can become something nice in the future on a tower scape with this kind of, say, sequence. But what is next in that way? Of course, this knowledge has to be scripted. From, say, post-scripting, that was the first one, to pre-scripting is, of course, a next step to gain knowledge. You know all that kind of stuff, so that's not important. But here, for instance, one example, uh, how to make use stairs in that way. Yeah? So you, yeah, you use your house or your office tuk, 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 to go up in that way further. And wow, it becomes much nicer than Escher ever have done on the, on, the, on the planet. And you have a tower that I really would like to make with you somewhere here in this town to make it from the bottom to the top in that way. Or if I make landscapes to start, can I do that? 
that to make landscapes? Yeah, yeah, Stefano was talking about it, but this is good. Let's start with, in this case, landscapes with housing. Then I start to connect them. I use the housing or the offices to make a, a next step. And wow, I get this. It's a very stable environment with grottos that kiss each other and that go from one step to the other, that I can go further up to the, uh, to the bottom, to the top. And then I indeed have my a porous tower that makes it possible to live together. And so you can experiment on that. You script them and you get different kind of, say, results as that. That's what I can see in these cases that are there. This is a bit slow, this machine. And of course we have to calculate it. So the book will give you also like a format how much you need to compensate in, uh, in certain kind of elements to make that relative, say, a, a proposal further. Have that been realized? Yes, some of you are doing that. And I showed this, uh, what happened in Madrid on these planes when this kind of bizarre plans are made in the past and where we make two buildings as such uh, in a production which is Spanish that is simply not nice and that is somehow like open with two small windows. I mean, these are, is this this kind of, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this group of people that want to look outside? The windows are smaller than, a, than a, uh, the toilet in a way. So here what we try to do, instead of a patio block, we flip it like this. And why? Because this, this endless sea of patios is somehow also very boring. And what happens then? That if the sea continues, that we make one block that shows its interior. That's what it, and then surround it with neighborhoods and then you're basically done. How to do that? Because in between the neighborhoods we have to walk from the bottom to the top. We paint it orange, of course, to warm up then, then, and construct it with local technology. Very cheap in that way. Get an extra neighborhood, put it on top in that way and then clad it and we are done is what we are aiming to say. And I take you up for this walk huh? that you can go through these areas even, I can see it from the houses even like, so that I can escape, I can meet people, I can go around, have this route and in the end, of course, this soccer field that's floating over Madrid is, is the aim, is the destination. Please let us make this kind of dreams. And because also at that moment, it is like hoovering over the city and it says, I want to be there. Icons, this forbidden word that we were discussing this morning, is somehow maybe a good word if we also use it for housing and not only for museums or uh, from, for infrastructure at that way. And indeed, it gives some thoughts for thinking in the press afterwards. So let me take you further to another example in Rotterdam where it was flattened out in the war and was uh, create this kind of urbanism of, of coincidences. Not so bad because it makes a, like a space where we can experiment. We were asked to make the, this kind of 500 houses and then this market hall in between. And we said, no, 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 don't do that in that way because the market hall needs not to be like in Barcelona, like, like uh, you want to be big, you want to show, you want to be proud on your food and you want to, so let's flip it. And the client said, no, 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 that, I can't do that. I said, you have more penthouses. Yeah, but they don't have a view. Okay, we make a view, but this is too expensive, too much steel, said the engineer. Okay, we do it in a Roman way, but then my lift doesn't say fit in, so we make the lift in that way and then we're done. <laughs> so we use it <laughs> in a kind of way that we construct it in a Dutch method with tunnels like this. It's a really nice method. I can recommend it if this film continues. Yeah, there it comes. And then it kisses each other. And this kissing act is, was a celebration which I would like to share with you. Because actually the building is not that expensive. The pr it is so, it's used for social and, and middle class housing, lower middle class housing. And in that way, for free, you have a market hall, is what it wants to say. And that's, of course, we didn't have much money for the cladding. But we had a good say at that moment, a fantastic space where we could open up our windows, say to your son, Get, come on guy, with a fish upstairs so that we can have a good day. Dinner. It took the attention of more people, but that's also nice. When, when do you? When I, I loved, I didn't expect that to be honest. Huh? And then it came into the into the news, and they said oh, maybe because of this building, Rotterdam gets 50,000 extra visitors annually. And so then even our queen liked it, and so she came and uh, to open the building. So we had a good laugh, and we had a and of course it's behaved like Cinderella. Huh? That's like a, so it's how you open up a building, and you went around talked with everybody, and then the doors could be opened. And I was also surprised with that momentum in that way, because what happens when the escalator? are too narrow, or what happens at the moment that the doors are too tight and that the fire people are warning me to, uh, and that we have to change overnight all the smoke detectors to facilitate this and to have, of course, our friends continuously cooking, and then that's the market hall, not more, not less. And yes, this is the most important moment, somehow. Because why? These people watch the market. They are, and 
no developer can, can change the market law because 250, say, windows are, uh, are witnessing this. And then they say, you don't change it. So public-private partnership is somehow made in this way where this kind of inhabitants with this kind of views and uh, say, of course, with this kind of beauty that indeed even your kids, yes, they're going to play uh, with that. And uh, it comes into the domestic as such. Again, Lego is coming in. And then these are the, the ways to how it is to be. Rotterdam got a place, not only during the day, but also during the night. The big windows make it warm at that moment, and it turns into a, a collective space. And indeed, I'm happy that sometimes they have to close the market hall because it is too busy in that way to make it possible. So it's possible to do, uh, to do a lot on this. Can you get the, re the next one? There it is, if it works. Second chapter. Access, uh, another, because if you have porosity, another element to make um, this high rises more accessible uh, was this test that we did with big stairs, and would, that, would people use it? So this is only 40 meter difference, so it's nothing. But it's like, wow, this became one of the places where you wanted to go in Rotterdam to hike up and down, to test your heart, and to become more healthy in that way. So beside the trees of, of uh, Stefano, I need these stairs to make us really happy in that way. So how to continue in this district, and I showed that this morning also, here are the stairs in that way, and these are the new towers that we imagine, and every tower has to give a hug to the neighbor. And, that's what, and then we can make, think about a three-dimensional neighborhood. That brings me back to Shenzhen, you know, the place here in the area where around the building of, of OMA it was questioned how to make it turn that into a neighborhood where this suggestion of OMA, of this uh, stock exchange, would continue. Namely, you make balconies. Now, honestly, I like the building, but I never have been on the terrace there. Did you? So a stair to that terrace would be wonderful to get it on. And I hope that you can help me for that. So it's, it's, it's not a high rise in that way. It's a middle rise that we were asked to, uh, to make, if this continues. Yeah, there it is. So these are the envelopes. We said, OK, let's first work also with that lifting aspect and create a plaza on, on, for shadow in that moment, and then start to, to use the floors to kick out and to hug each other and to go further. And then we make a very nuanced suggestion. We made even a software for them to make this uh, indeed imaginable and affordable in a different say, circumstances as such. And that's what you can see in this uh, variety, hopefully. I don't know. What happens there? There it is. Hmm. This get out of the paste, of course, that I was intending to have, but that's, uh, there it is. And then you get these neighborhoods that somehow are co uh, going further with it, that want to, to shake hands, that want to reach out, and that want to talk with each other and create, indeed, maybe those balconies for the trees that, uh, uh, that uh, Stefano was talking about in a way. This makes me... I take you to Tirana also, and then, uh, to say, okay, what can we do there in that spirit, eh? while enlarging uh, the forests, and, and, and uh, what can we do also on that spot, a little bit uh, a gesture with the towers that they are intending to do. This is what they do, in, say, in the best, say, uh, East European tradition, to make this kind of towers. And we said, wow, with same typologies. And we started to say, can we do something with it? Can we shift them to make more, more forest? Can we... Uh, a bantam as such, uh, there they go, there they, and they shift. Can we put them like this in that way so that they kiss each other and they become like connectors? So here a series of like operations per prefab tower, I would say, lead to a composition of this kind of, say, new neighborhood. So you can do with a kind of prefab system still something which is kind of nice and beautiful and turn into a beautiful, say, object and variety that can be then seen from everywhere, like fallen stones, somewhere in, in Tirana, is what it wants to say. Third chapter, after connect connection. What is can I do next step in that way? And of course, green. We, uh, I saw that there was a copyright uh, issue in the vertical forest. So, <laughs> but let me go back to Gangjo, which is uh, in Korea, where we were faced with this already uh, about nine years ago, and where we are now working on uh, finally to develop this what we call power center that's on that side, and where it is. Um, uh, that, that's over here, you can see it. And you know what, what you do normally? You make towers and a plinth and a water plaza inside for the malls. And if you look at it, it's everywhere. Tower, plinth, water. Tower, plinth, water. 
that, and it, <laughs> we made thousands of these pictures. I mean, you can hang them here at your walls and see how good we are, how original we are. We all use the same typologies, is what it says. So can we do something, think differently? So instead of this, uh, we were thinking more like, what can we do, um, uh, think like this, so that the mountains get connected somehow. And that is what you j flip by, that here on this side, by this, we add maybe this, we force that into a kind of compactization. And how can we manage that with the logics of real estate in that way and transform that valley into a continuation of the mountains? So here, if you, this is the matter that we think, we try to push it up in that, um, so as much as possible, that, so that you could imagine that this would be the pos possible landscapes as such. And here it emerges from that. But what, how to make the logic? You I lift it for a moment. And it was an, nice to work the last uh, times about what, what you normally have in real estate, bubble diagrams. So you go from bubble to bubble, destination to destination. Fair enough. And uh, but so yes, let's accompany that with a catalog of cupolas. And let's say every cupola has a certain kind of, say, uh, a typology for housing or for hotels or for offices or here for service apartments, they could do in that way. And we select it in the end with a client this composition that they would like to have and place it on, on the surface like this. And then you would start to imagine how that this kind of sequence is that. And we can make terraces. So um, from, say, a straight wall, a flush wall, you can make uh, elements that you can uh, imagine where you can plant. So it starts on the lower part with these bubbles from the, with the shopping center, the plinth, as you would say. Uh. There it goes further. There it goes further and further and further to up till the moment that you reach the top. And then you have this, not more, not less. Of course, this, is a, this was a starting point. The next point was to, to select a species that would grow on it, on all the levels. And the good thing in Korea and other climate than here is that you have a shared this boxes, this specific species um, that can grow on the most interesting places of it. So how to imagine that in the end, to have that everywhere, so that to reserve that and to make in that way an environment where you're surrounded with it, but where indeed, the, because of it's not obliqueness, but like this, you could celebrate that and turn it into this new, say, mountainscape that would continue the mountains in the area and turn it in that way, in a model, as such. I end in Amsterdam, in that way, where at the moment, and I, I saw it, but this basic volume for housing and offices on the plinth have to be made uh, by, by us. And we use the knowledge of Gangyo to, in a way, to crack it down, in a way, these volumes. Because of the sun and with a, with a specific, say, software, we could generate terraces, shadow, overhangs, bay windows, and, uh, uh, and structure in one go, so that gradually it could turn into this kind of erasure in that moment, and the scraping act that would uh, turn this, uh, uh, this, uh, this office building composition into somehow like an, a, a, is it a deteriorated one or a scratched out? So the demand for a mirror facade on the outside, it's in the south, uh, in the south axis of Amsterdam. And this green valley makes, I think, a new, uh, say, a change in that office environment in this La Défense of, um, of, of the Netherlands. I'm, oh, this is horrible. So here you see some images how it, uh, it starts to look, how you can go around, and how stairs will connect from the bottom to the top. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, this is better, battery issue. And how you can see yourself, but also these cracks that take you away. And that will uh, then grow into this kind of environment uh, that we indeed we planted with Piet Ardolf as landscape architect into this vertical, uh, say, jungle. And that starts construction uh, the coming weeks, actually. So that's good. The fourth chapter that I would like to add this morning was social parameter. We can talk a lot about green, but somehow also the social component is important to make our densities more congruent. And, and this game that we developed with the students and with researchers in the, in the university is trying to show that if you were making your, your nicest house, for instance, this one with the bowling alley, or the one that has a, almost like a chapel-like space, that you can mitigate with this 
game and that for to, to admit your neighbors in that way. So on site, I could imagine a fantastic puzzle in that way where I want to see my neighbor because he is different at, in that way. Can't we do that with some kind of developers here? I'm happy that in 2017, the first piece will be constructed in Chicago uh, to test that with seven families as such so that we can show how that would work and how to help you further on that. It's a thing that we did before maybe in Amsterdam with these different neighborhoods coll collaged together in this uh, container building almost in the harbor. But of course at the moment in Taipei we want to bring it further with this vertical village, and uh, which is quite challenging, but it's based on a demand. Like I want to have normal cube house, I want to have a house with, a, with this, I want to have a house with a tower. Can I make a twin set? Can I make a factory house? Can I do a Catholic house in that way or a barn in that way? Or is it imaginable to have a classic courtyard or like a running uh, uh, strip uh, house or a cloudy house and have m different materials, different landscapes, different fences and can do that on different scales? This is what I would like to make with some of you because then at that moment you can select. And this was the first selection in Taipei I didn't cho choose, they did. And then you have actually a fantastic building, I would say, that was like buildable. But the client wanted to make the Jet Foundation and they wanted to spend more money and they asked for more people anyway. And then, then I'm happy to have this now. So yes, now we're talking about a, a, a skyscraper, I would say. And the contrast between those two is lovely. Suddenly your urban villages are there again. They combine individualism with density is what this project wants to say. And it wants to avoid these big monsters that are there. And can I go on? Yes, in Jakarta I will do it also with like smaller, um, uh, say, smaller units as such. So to use basically the context as such to uh, the, uh, the smaller entities over there to top it up with a hotel and add some elements to have this kind of structure that is in it, to add the trusses, to add the different cantilevers, maximum 10% of steel, as what they, they, and then have these terraces. And this is what this Kamang Tower now is going to do from January onwards. I think it's always, I love always to just to flip you through the plans because what happens at that moment is basically that every floor is not the same. That's a nightmare, of course, eh, for you, you think, because on the other hand, you, uh, the, can you control that? And that's software that's kind of helping you, and also for the real estate, also for the, the, the mucklers to rent it out, and it creates this fantastic collection of differences from the bottom to the top, where it gradually evaporates in the kind of, say, the normal bedroom of the hotel that's on top of it, as you can see gradually here. That is, so there is a system to make that vertical village uh, thinkable or too manageable. That is what I wanted to show with Kamang as such. And then before I leave it to the next say, and then you have this, this is what we need to show. With all these kind of aspects. Yes, I can give the beer to my neighbor or the tea in that way. Uh, yes, I have barbecues every Saturday and then the whole building looks like smoky because it has everywhere this, this bar. And then I have this is what the, now the catalog of houses is providing to you. You go to the site, you select what you want. You have more options to choose. I can even go through the building all my lifetime because I find that way more uh, variety. And variety is what we need, ladies and gentlemen. Because if we don't make that, like in Hong Kong, for instance, then you get so much uh, the same that you lose competition and you lose, say, the experience of uh, what you can do. Last slide. I have three minutes to go, don't worry. And I will make, come to a kind of conclusion if, the, if you can swap it. Is that possible? There it is. Chapter five, context. That's what we're talking about. Eh? Can we create, can we use context? Uh, can our, and can we make context? And yes, there are many laws that do that. And I'll give you one example in Vienna, uh, that's this place, and there on that spot next to this gasometer we are uh, making a tower, that one. We said you can make it, you need more flexibility. Every floor should be house and office, is what is, and that leads to that. Yes, it should be more compact to gain more facade that grow the tower also and that created this kind of plazas at that moment. And then we found out this law that says that maximum two hours of shadow is allowed in, uh, in our spaces. If I apply that on this block on the other side, then I have to cut this from the tower. Then it becomes context. And suddenly the tower becomes higher, but these guys, as you can see here, have 
those, uh, say, possibilities. I can make the terraces as such, and, and I can use it to break the wind in that moment, and from this perspective, it turns into that. From this perspective, it turns into that. It anchors itself in the environment. I end in Jakarta again, because somehow, I think it's good to talk about cities that want to appear in this whole periphery of the bigger brothers in the very heart and that want to show what they can do. I showed this morning, this, this is the context that we are working with in Peruri, like built matter that is a bit small, nondescript, and with Jordi we try to imagine a kind of tower where we would use that and turn it into an object. I want to show you the logics behind that. Uh, because it has this side cast characteristics. This is the sizes. This is the amount of green that we need, the pavements around it. This is the FAR uh, 7. This is the different uh, program that we allow for. We, make the ex we ex excavate the site. We make a basement of parking and a connection with the new MTR. We make the basement retail in a normal restrictions, and then we start to work on the retail blocks. We cut them in different entities and throw them on the ground. We add the armature that connects them and make the upper retail blocks in the same manner, but that terraces are peering and that we can imagine that also with the entertainment blocks, MGM, that are participating in this. End up with the different housing entities from Sawas to courtyard houses or going into these office blocks that have their own identity and, and topping it up with the, with the new Marriott that could be on that spot. And then is what you have with it. Uh, and you cover it with green at that moment. We do it with a no, that's it's easy. These are basically there's one high rise, two mid rises, and a lot of low rises. And these are four towers that way that are connected with bridge structures, maximum 10% of steel. And then we can have this kind of medium cantilever, the smaller one, and that's it. The cores are accompanied with super columns that surround them, how they support that structures, and then we start to create these different architectural facades that have their own demands, their own climate constraints, and that create together, hopefully, a self-shading device and an, uh, a vertical jungle that cools itself through the water. Can we escape from the closed malls is the intention of this process that I want to show. And then we can make destinations again. You wanted to have vertical urbanism with your towers. I haven't seen them enough yet. We need the next step, as you have been promising this morning, to, uh, to go in the next co uh, events to the next step in it, to radicalize your suggestions and to have this is what I would love and to make with each other. And then it's there uh, in the future and how we can see that it's livable as, uh, as such. And I end half uh, a minute with this, uh, say, summary on that way. That uh, indeed from this flat city of Jakarta, that uh, we that all its kampongs, its beautiful villages that are there, uh, but that are very difficult to reach, that somehow with the MTR you make more intensity, more connections as such, and that we need to celebrate that somehow with this kind of series of amount of kampongs. I explained how it worked with the metro. Yes, please. How we created this hole. How these different, different destinations are fragmented to cause differentiation and shadow and in between spaces. Different kind of groups of people can live and work there and top it up in this way. Now it's covered with these different facades, treating it each itself what it wants to be and then with these landscapes. Filtering the air, causing by shadow and by by simply by these creeks that are in between and turning it into maybe hmm, something that Jakarta could see as a, an answer to what happened in Kuala Lumpur in that way and to give their own say, translation of context into, into uh, density. And uh, with that maybe I do see possibilities to, um, to work with, uh, with those spaces and to make in that way here this kind of tapestry that is turned into uh, verticality. I take you inside. You, you can point where you live, basically, in which neighborhood you are. Because that's what you want to do, no? Instead of 40th three floor in that way. Go over the cinemas, Soho complex. And the Sawas, up to the top with the World Trade Center. And hotel. Thank you very much. <laughs>